Hey everybody. Today I'm going to talk about why a lot of cheap power supplies tend to have such a high failure rate. Here you're looking at two power supply boards that were pulled from cheap power supplies. Both are, in, are still in working condition and have no damage on them. Today I'm going to be talking about why these things have such a high rate of failure. Anytime a manufacturer makes a power supply, when they want to bring the price down, they'll do what's called cut corners to make the power supply cheap. A lot of times you'll find that the power supply casing itself is very flimsy. And the wires will tend to be kind of cheap. These are actually okay, but the wire gauge is quite thin. These wires will get hot real quick. Another way that the power supply manufacturers will cut corners is they will bypass a lot of important filtering components. For example, right here, this component here should go right there. That's where that would belong. And for another example, this little thing here and this little device here, another filtering component. would typically go right here. Now I'm not exactly sure what all of these little devices are called. Not be, not the best in power supplies, but just I, I know where the stuff belongs and everything. This particular unit here has cheap quality capacitors. None of them but in this in this particular one are blooded up, but reviews on newegg.com have talked about these getting so hot that the plastic would like melt off of them. It's not good. This is rated this power supply, believe it or not. Just take take a guess what it's rated for. This power supply is rated for 580 watts. Now you tell me there, there is no way that this cheap thing here could actually pull 580 watts. Like I said, a lot of manufacturers will will exaggerate a bit and they'll just, they'll just go crazy with all of the amperage ratings and stuff rating the power supply board for more than what it's capable of here's a customer review for the Okia 550 watt power supply on newegg.com it's labeled Broadway Comcorp P4 Okia 550 RB 550 ATX power supply retail $24.99 for the price this review is just a good example of how cheap power supplies can be false advertised. Check this out. I'll read it to you. Pros. Um, fans and casing are of higher quality than most cheap PSUs. Cons. If you open it up, you will find it to boast up to a CWT 235 watts. At least that's what the highest watt that the PCB is silt screen for using a 5 amp 250 volt views which is what this uses you will typically find a 10 amp 250 volt fuse in the power supply there are so little 12 volt holes on the PCB they had to funnel all three of the 20 gauge should be 18 gauge wires for the PCI Express connector into one 20 gauge wire same with the 8 pin CPU connector there is really only a single 12 volt rail. The 12 volt was rectified by a 20 volt just means maximum can, it can rectify 16 amp shot key. Minusing the combined 232.5 watt capacity for the 5 volt and 3.3 volt, you get 317.5 watts. Divide by 12, you get the average of about 26 amps. Now since we did 26 equals 16, which don't equal to much, that's the label versus what the power supply can actually do, by the way. The 5 volt was rectified by a 40 volt 20 amp part, and the 3.23 was rectified by a 20 volt 16 amp part. Doesn't sound like that label at all, does it? The capacitors used are HAX, a brand related to Fujiyu, whatever, however you pronounce it. I've seen that brand before and they suck. Not known for quality capacitors. Don't cheap out and buy this. Seriously, a power supply is easily one of the most important as well as overlooked part of the computer. No continuous rating for that 550 watt max output. Perhaps it, it means it will do 
it for just a millisecond before exploding. Lock is is a is a is typically known for putting false rings on the power supplies, so that's why they, their power supplies are known to catch on fire. Here you're looking at the Logasys PS575 XBK 575 watt ATX 12 volt SLI rated power supply. Of course, this is a very cheap, low quality power supply. So, I'll show you what I mean by how Logasys makes up their own little max wattages. As you'll take a look here, it says total power 450 watts. And then put this little thing called max output 575 watts. This is what is called false advertising and in my opinion with this particular power supply about well, the reviews say on Newegg if you decide to purchase this power supply for whatever kind of computer you're going to use it in I highly recommend that you purchase fire insurance because there are so many reviews on this unit of it um, blowing up and catching on fire this is the longest as PS 480 D2 watt power supply also, you can see here that it's really a 330 watt power supply that is false advertised as a 480 watt. I'm really surprised Newegg, Newegg has real, is actually still selling these units. It's a real wonder that Logsys hasn't had a lawsuit filed against them for false advertising and their units, the, that's the poor quality of their units of them blowing up and catching fire and stuff. This is one brand that I highly recommend that you do not purchase. This one here. Heat sinks aren't that big. That's not really good. And right down here, they have tip. They just have a couple of standard diodes soldered in there, rather than one of them. If you're into soldering and stuff, you can actually improve the quality of these power supplies by, of course, taking your soldering iron and removing these little bypass wires, and then actually installing the component. Like if I was installed, that's exactly how it would go in. Here you're looking at a power supply that I've actually managed to upgrade a bit. I've put a couple of these little things in it as well as one of these. Made it better than what it was. I also changed the fan in it as well. Put an LED fan inside of it. This now has got better filtering components in it. You can see them right there. Those parts were originally bypassed. And there's the other little device I was talking about right there. There's no way that I would ever actually try to pull 480 watts from this thing. I'm sure it would blow up. If you decide to, if you're on a budget and you decide to buy a cheap power supply, the thing that you should definitely do is look at the reviews on Newegg.com. So that way you can see customer experience from the unit, whether it's had failures, had fires, or anything like that. Because believe it or not, if you look around the views, reviews, you can actually find decent power supplies with a low price on them. Here you're looking at a quality power supply. This is an Intermax 460 watt power supply. You go ahead and take a close look at the label now. Just for you guys, I'm going to open up this unit and let you have a look inside. So I can do a little comparison here. As we take a look inside here, you can see this unit is crammed full of components. High quality capacitors, humongous heat sinks, big transformers, all the filtering components you need, adjustable fan controller. That's nice. And this one's rated for 460 watts. 460 watt high quality unit versus cheapo 580 watt. Now I think you have the idea of why cheap power supplies tend to have such a high failure rate.